Wow, uh, this is insane. Um, hey everyone, uh, yep, my name's Armani, um, one of the creators of um, Anchor, uh, one of the creators of Backpack, one of the creators of XNFTs, um, and I thought today we would do this talk a little different. Um, we'll talk about Backpack, we'll talk about XNFTs, um, but I wanted to rewind the clock back a bit uh, to the early days of Solana uh, about, two, about two years ago. Um, and I wanted to kind of go back to one of my favorite applications uh, on the network. Uh, one of the first Solana wallets, uh, Solid, Solid.io. Um, so here it is in all of its glory, although you can't see my, my screen, so that's great and will make for a wonderful presentation um, that revolves around a, a laptop connection. Um, There we go. Oh, okay, we have, we, have, we, have, we have something. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, we have Solid here. Why am I talking about Solid? Um, so Solid is a really interesting um, piece of, uh, of technology in the history, um, in the history of Solana. Um, uh, and the reason why it's interesting is that it was um, one of the first applications that served as kind of a parent for the genesis um, a lot of the, for a lot of the protocols um, and a lot of the applications that we've seen over the past couple years. Uh, most notably, uh, the first kind of thing that came out of Solid um, was that you know, a team came and they wanted to not build a wallet, um, but they wanted to build an order book, right? This was the first um, kind of dream for, uh, for, the, for Solana, the network, um, and you know, you know, in order to have order books, you needed a wallet, um, and you needed, you know, a working key management system. Um, and so kind of, you know, um, the folks, or the, the, the team that built Solid um, kind of came, built this kind of open source piece of infrastructure, um, and, and kind of built Project Serum, and then out of that came like a lot of DeFi um, on, on Solana. So that, you know, this is where Mango Markets kind of derived from, um, Zeta, um, Zero One, um, Radium, Atrix, and kind of the list goes on and on for DeFi as we have today. Um, but it wasn't just DeFi on Solana um, that derived from Solid. Um, a lot of applications also derived from, from Solid, not just protocols. Um, and like the reason for this was that, well, it was an open source repo um, in a time when developer documentation um, and developer relations uh, were scarce, if there was any at all. Um, you know, back in like kind of the, the, the early days, um, there was like Michael Vines and like the Solana like core team in a Discord that would just like answer questions for folks. Um, and then people would have to like pattern match against like, you know, the scarce resources that existed to like figure out how to like use the blockchain, right? But Solit was like a nice like piece of code that anybody can come and like take a look at, um, read through, learn how to interact with the network, learn how to serialize and deserialize token accounts, um, and do all the nitty gritty details um, that like made Solana develop development really hard, um, but having that reference implementation um, for application developers really allowed us to kind of bootstrap the snowball um, to kind of build the developer ecosystem as it exists today. Um, and we had a lot of wallets that kind of like derived from Solid as well. Maybe the most um, notable one being, being Phantom. Um, and what was so amazing about this was that, you know, the Phantom team came along, um, they didn't really know much about Solana at all, um, and they didn't have to reinvent the wheel. They didn't have to reinvent like token serialization or private key management. They had like a great um, reference where they can use to build their own wallet and focus on innovating where it mattered, right? And then they built this like beautiful application um, that kind of like led the way for like, um, you know, great UI and UX uh, for applications on the network without kind of having to like redo what had already been done. Um, and so Solid is like really interesting kind of for this reason. And, and if you take a look at like a lot of the features on Solid, um, really what you see is the story of the evolution of, of Solana in the early days. Um, and you know, if we just like take a look at this like top bar here, it's like pretty interesting. Um, so like the first thing we see is like this like popular tokens list. Um, and at first glance, this is really simple um, and maybe not that interesting. Um, but what this was, was it was the first static JSON file um, that applications used 
um, to pr um, you know, provide metadata, um, to provide information about you know, um, tokens on the network, right? Anything from a token address to a ticker symbol to the name um, to the image of, of what the logo of that token looked like. Um, and this would later evolve into like, the package that everybody used, which was the Solana token registry, um, which is now deprecated, and maybe we all hate it because there's thousands of, token, uh, thousands of, 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 of tokens in there. Um, but this was before the days of the token metadata program. Um, and this kind of allowed us to like, kind of bootstrap a lot of the applications to provide like, important information uh, to users. Um, Kind of the next tab here is maybe one of the more underappreciated uh, features of Solid, which is to say that Solid was actually the first bridge uh, or the first application connecting a bridge to Solana. And this was super important in the early days, right? This is where a lot of the liquidity from Ethereum and for Bitcoin bridged over um, into the network to bootstrap DeFi um, on Solana. And this was super, this was super important. Um, and kind of the list of these features goes on and on. This next one is like pretty interesting and pretty subtle. And if you've used this, then you're kind of like an OG on, on Solana, this migrate tokens button. Um, so if you remember um, kind of in the early days, um, the token program did not have associated token accounts. Um, and it's okay, what does this mean, right? So you can imagine, you know, well, the way Solid used to look, um, the way all the wallets worked, was that not only would you see this, you know, sole address, uh, but you would actually see a token address for each token account um, in the UI. So if you had USDC, that's a token address. Um, if you have Star Atlas, that's a token address. Mingo, token address. Sol, that's a token address. So you had like N addresses for N tokens in your wallet, which made for this horribly like frustrating UI UX, where if you wanted to send a token from me to you, uh, you would not only have to get the Sol address, but you would have to figure out, okay, which token are you getting and, and, and get the, say, USDC and send the token Token address associated with that token, um, and not only that address, but you had to pick between like one of like many. You might have one USCC account, or you might have two, you might have ten. Um, and it was this horrible, horrible kind of user experience. Uh, but these problems were eventually solved, right? We eventually got the associated token program. We now have this like nice, simple UI where we have a single um, address in wallets, and I just say, "Here's my address. Send me whatever token," and it just magically gets to me. Um, and Solit was like there for that whole kind of um, you know that whole transition and that whole migration, right? So this migrate tokens feature was created to migrate users from the old world and bring them into the new world. Um, and it was painful, it was frustrating, um, but, you know, we got through it as a network and, and we have kind of what we have today. Um, you know, we keep going down this list, right? Swapped, swapping tokens. Uh, you might forget Solid was the first wallet that had an embedded, an embedded swapper. Right, and this was um, like a nice like open source widget that anybody can take. The Soulflare team took it, embedded it into their wallet, um, and then boom, they had a they had native token swapping inside of the wallet. And of course, they eventually you know made it their own. They in enhanced the UI. They integrated Jupiter. Um, but this kind of like started that, that kind of like. Um, you know, momentum. Um, you know, maybe like the last like interesting feature here is like this, the Solana name service. I don't have any domains here. Um, but, you know, the Solana name service was something that the Bonfita team built. Um, obviously an important primitive for the network, um, but they didn't have a dis distribution channel, right? And so they just simply opened a PR to the repo, um, got Solana names into the wallets, and then, and then bam, you, you, know, you, have, uh, you, know, you have an important protocol for the ecosystem, um, and you have a way to manage it right inside of the wallet. Um, and so, you know, the history of, of Solid really is the history of the evolution of, of, like, getting the snowball rolling for the Solana application and developer ecosystem. Um, and so, you know, fast forwarding today um, and looking at, like, the tech that we're working on with Backpack and XNFTs, a lot of these same themes are, are coming up. Um, you know, and, and to like maybe talk about like the motivations for building this stuff, um, we actually didn't want to build Backpack. We didn't want to build a wallet. Um, what we really cared about was building a new protocol. We cared about XNFTs. We cared about full stack decentralized applications uh, that anybody can run, right? Um, but there wasn't really any way to build XNFTs um, because there wasn't a production grade open source wallet, right? Um, Solid was never meant to be um, a, you know, a wallet business. It was really just a developer tool um, to build other things like the order book, right? So, and, and we had no other options, right? There was, um, everybody was closed source. There was no shared piece of infrastructure where we can innovate on protocols, innovate 
iterate on product um, and push the network forward, right? So this is what started kind of like the journey to building Backpack um, as a um, open source shared piece of infrastructure um, for the Solana ecosystem um, to work on together and to build like the next generation of protocols and products to kind of push the ecosystem forward. And, you know, if we like go take a look at like you know the repository, um, we can like take a look at how this is already developing and playing out um, for the network. So if we go like take a look at the contributors, um, and you know we find our good friend like Jordan Sexton, um, take a look at his commits, um, and like this one is like really really um, a, a good example of the of what I'm really excited about for Backpack, which is to say we now have you know the 1.0 release of so the wallet standard out. Um, not just for Solana, um, but it's a, actually a, a protocol agnostic uh, wallet standard. Um, and Jordan, you know, messaged me maybe a couple months ago, and, and he was complaining, and he was saying, like, hey, Armani, like, you know, wallet APIs on Solana are a mess. Um, everybody's doing different things. There's no standardization. There's no, like, high-quality interface for teams to implement. Um, and we need to be less reactive, and we need to be proactive about standardizing APIs for this super important piece of the stack. Um, and so Jordan kind of went on this journey to build this new standard, um, and, and which is what we have today. Um, but a small but maybe important part of him building this was having a playground to implement the APIs, iterate on the design, get feedback from people in a live production grade wallet um, without him having to reinvent the wheel, right? Without him having to reinvent a Chrome extension, reinvent injected providers, reinvent key management. Um, and so I like to think that Backpack had a small but important part in that development process um, being this like shared piece of infrastructure um, so that he can focus on what mattered, which is new protocols to push the ecosystem forward. Um, and I think that's a pretty cool example. Um, one of the next ones that I'm super excited about um, is this PR that's open right now from John Wong, which is compressed, compressed NFTs. Um, and compressed NFTs, I won't go into the details of them. It's the super exciting kind of improvement on the existing NFT standard, um, you know, developed in collaboration with Metaplex and Solana um, to reduce the cost by several orders of magnitude um, for NFTs. Um, and, and John and Noah, you know, um, came to me and, and said, hey, Armani, like, you know, we have this protocol, um, but we need a wallet. We need somebody to, to display this protocol to show um, how, how awesome it is, how useful it is. Like, you know, um, we don't have anybody to work with, like, you know, can we add this to Backpack? You know, and my response was like, yes, this is the entire point of Backpack was so that we can iterate on these like new innovations as an ecosystem um, and, and, and push everything forward. So now we have this kind of awesome PR. We'll have compressed NFTs in Backpack really soon. Um, and we just continue to like innovate on this like, you know, open source, like shared primitive. Um, and, you know, maybe the last kind of interesting um, example, you know, especially in the context of Jack's talk, is, is royalties, right? This is like a super important um, conversation happening, not just on Solana, but on, on, on every blockchain. Um, and, you know, like kind of on this topic, you know, the hyperspace team, they're, they're an NFT aggregator on Solana. They, they, they DM'd me on Telegram, you know, um, last week, and they said, you know, hey, Armani, like, um, you know, Cardinal Labs built this new royalty and forcing NFT protocol. Um, it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. We just integrated it in a hyperspace. How do we get this in a backpack? Um, and they sent me some code. Um, I, ch I looked at, took a look, look at the code, looked straightforward. I said, all right, great, let's get this in within 24 hours because this is that important. Um, and we merged it in and, and now that's in kind of, you know, the repository. And now we have a version of royalty enforced NFTs on backpack. Um, and so, you know, I'll, I'll stop rambling. Yeah, yeah. Cool, right? Uh, so, you know, I'll stop rambling a bit. Um, but the story here um, really is um, positioning um, Backpack, positioning XNFTs, positioning this repository um, as, you know, a piece of shared infrastructure that's accessible to all developers in the ecosystem. Um, if you want to build new protocols, if you want to build new applications, new products, um, you have access to a wallet so that you can focus, focus on what matters, focus on the new, you know, the new primitives that you want to build and not reinvent the wheel um, for what I would consider one of the most important pieces of the Web3 stack. Um, and so that's a bit about, you know, an introduction for the context of this project. Um, you know, now I want to bring Tristan Iver, my co-founder, on stage um, to show you a bit about Backpack, 
to show you a bit about XNFTs um, and show you a bit about what we have today. So Tristan, want to come on stage? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Wow. Wow, there's a lot of people here. Hi, it's a pleasure to see all of you. I'll throw this over here. Um, so my name is Tristan. I've been working in the Solana ecosystem for about two and a half years now. Um, I've helped incubate many projects of which you may have heard of, such as Serum, Phantom, Mango, Zeta, DeFi Land, Aurori, and a lot of others, so I've had the pleasure of working with some of the most talented developers in our space, and I can say we have a very unique space of powerful developers, of kind human beings. Um, shout out to Anatoly, one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life, and also a brilliant engineer. Um, without further ado, I'm gonna show you a little bit about what Armani was talking about, but before that, I wanna say one point. So he was talking about all these references in which you could come, you could do a PR to the Backpack repo, and you could get your protocol, your idea merged into Backpack. But if you don't even want to do that, if you don't even want to interface with us, you don't have to. You can just come and build an XNFT, publish it to xnft.gg, and then people can use your protocol, your standard, your idea, whatever it is, your game, directly within Backpack without even having to interface with us in the first place. Um, so xnft.gg, is our app store. It is a library of all the XNFTs that have been published by a bunch of wonderful teams in the ecosystem, as you can see here. And the way this works is that if you have Backpack, which is this, this is you know your balances, this is kind of what you're used to. One update that's coming out pretty soon that we're excited for is another button right here, which is us integrating with Stripe as one of their on-ramp partners, hopefully making it easier for people to enter the space to bring some fiat into their wallet. So thank you to the Stripe team, which I think are here as well. Um, you know, this is all typical. This is what you're used to. Nothing very innovative here. But if you go to this tab right here, now you see applications. I don't think you've ever really seen that within a wallet in Web3, have you? It's what we're used to on our phones. It's what we're used to on our Macs. It's this world of apps, this world that took the whole World Wide Web this disparate segment of places in which you couldn't navigate unless you had context into one enclosure through which people who may have not been familiar or had that context could dive into the things that they really wanted to do and experience. So what we're trying to do is something very similar to that, completely open source, completely decentralized, completely on Solana and many other blockchains, and let's show you some XNFTs, baby. So this first one, I always show it, the TXO team, has done an incredible job with their XNFT. <laughs> Let's go, TXO. We love you guys. Um, TXO is an NFT marketplace, an aggregator, and they've built all of this with the React XNFT components themselves. So essentially, you know, this is going to be auto-updating as we do changes to the wallet, to the formats. It'll be standardized across the other XNFTs that use the React XNFT framework. Um, they have their marketplace, but what they've been receiving a lot of attention for recently is their analytics page. Um, and hopefully the Wi-Fi will load this. Let's give it a second. No? No? Well, anyway, if you get a chance, we'll give you a backpack invite code. We'll show you their analytics page, which is beautiful, all built with the native React XNFT components. Oh, there it was loading. Um, but I'm going to show you a few other XNFTs, because I don't have that much time. So Releap, Releap is a music NFT marketplace, but it's not just a marketplace. So you can come down here, and if you wanted, you know, I'm not logged in, but you could buy this NFT. But not only can you buy the NFT, you can also listen to the NFT. So one of the issues with music NFTs is people are like, oh, what am I going to do with a bunch of NFTs in my wallet that I can't listen to or I can't use or I can't do anything with? That's lame. That's boring. But what if you actually could have your music NFTs inside your backpack? You could listen to them while you're doing whatever that it is that you're doing in your day-to-day -day life. And now all of a sudden, we've actually created a mechanism that you can stream music NFTs. So really, thank you guys. Great job. We really like what you guys have been building. Um, there are some breaking changes to the ReactX NFT framework recently, which allowed us to add Tailwind and CSS components. This one hasn't been updated, so it's a little bit broken. But I still want to show it to you because it actually is one of the reasons that we built this. And what it unlocks is the ability to see assets which you are using within protocols on-chain. 
And please, internet, work with us here. But usually when you go to an NFT staking site or you go to a borrow lending protocol and you provide liquidity, you stake your NFTs, they disappear from your wallet. And that's that. And you can't see them anymore. And if you want to show your friend your NFTs, you have to go to the website. You have to connect your wallet. You have to go to the tab. You have to show them. But now with Backpack, you can have these different protocols that you're using in the same place so that if I wanted to show my friends my DGODs, I wouldn't have to go and go through that whole process. I could just open the DGOD staking X NFT and then see, look, these guys are staked right here. They're earning dust, but they're still in my wallet. If I wanted to, I could you know, claim the dust in here and whatnot. Um, it's another example. Who else should I show you guys? How about, I'm going to show you guys Flappy Bird. Don't worry, don't worry. But what about prices? So 95% of the times that I open FTX. I open FTX to go look at the prices. I don't know about you guys. I'm a crypto DJ, and I'm always curious what's happening with the market. So I'll open up this prices thing on back. On, excuse me, on FTX. And we thought, wait, why wouldn't you just be able to check all the prices that you're doing within Backpack itself? And the ni really interesting thing about this one specifically is that the other ones that I've shown you are back-ended by Solana contracts, right? They're things that are on-chain that are the back-end infrastructure for this. But this is actually, if it loads, again. If you have good Wi-Fi, this will load. I don't know how many people are on this public network. But this is essentially back-ended by CoinGecko's API, which is really interesting, right? Because you can back-end this with things that are on-chain. You can back-end it with protocols and whatnot. But you can also back-end it with Web2 infrastructure. You can go to CoinGecko, which is a wonderful price-checking site. You can subscribe to their APIs. And you can build an XNFT that allows people to check the prices of the different assets that they care about. Um, Another thing that we did, and this also relates to the music NFTs that I was showing earlier, is this little thing that we were very surprised no one had done before, which was essentially to make it so that you could pop out the wallet. Come on, load for me. Load for me. No? All right. Wi-Fi is not cooperating. Oh, am I not going to be able to show you guys Flappy Bird? That is so, so sad. Let me see something real quick. Oh, no, not there. Before they kick me off because my time is up as well. Let me see if I can get on the sponsor network. Let's see if this connects. Fingers crossed. If not, I'll walk away with my head down in shame. No. All right, anyway, I was going to show you guys Flappy Bird. And the nice thing about being able to pop it out is that, you know, if you want to listen to your music, you can behind the things that you're doing usually. But if you're playing a game, if you're doing something, and we haven't done the components resizable yet, but essentially the functionality that this allows is to you to bring this out. You can make it larger. You can make it full screen. You can play a game. We were running a Rory, the Rory game, which is a really cool game, through an iframe, through backpack. Um, and it really just kind of opens up the design space for projects to be able to get what they're building into the hands of the different people in the ecosystem. Um, we have a booth right out there. If anybody wants an invite code, which also gives you a whitelist to the NFT project that we're doing, which sadly I won't be able to show you, but we're doing the whole whitelist flow through backpack. We're actually changing the idea of collectibles to XNFT collectibles, which mean that instead of having to go through a verification process to get into a certain Discord channel and you're using this combination of Web3, Web2 infrastructure, what you can do now is if you own this NFT, you'll be able to click through it into whatever community hub that we build. And with these primitives, we'll be able to offer other NFT communities the opportunity to have holders chats, to have Twitter spaces, to have things that are like the social media that we use today only for the holders of that NFT, and you click through your NFT into that world. So essentially, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it so that these things that have been static for too long become dynamic, become living, become breathing, and we can really share the magic that NFTs should be for the world. Um, so without further ado, thank you so much for everybody. Sorry for going over time, and I appreciate you all for being here. Bye. Take care.